Hi, my name's Scott, the Miniature Maniac, and today we're making four different, easy to make bases. Sponsored by Skillshare. What up, mini family? Many time on this channel, I've professed my love for bases. Well, not that kind. While I do love a funkadelic riff, I meant these kinds of bases. I think the reason I have fun with bass is because the process of painting minis is so pedantic and basing is so freeing. You can make mistakes while you're basing because it probably makes the bass look more natural and it isn't the main highlight of the piece. That's the miniature that goes on top of the bass. So let's kick it off with the first bass, a nice sci-fi bass. Bass, 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 bass. We're going to start by taking apart some old electronics that I don't use anymore. When clipping electronics, be careful to not break open the individual components like capacitors. Just snip them off at the leads and everything should be good. But what do I know? I'm not a computer engineer or anything. Well, I was, and then I quit my job to be a YouTuber. Once you've gotten a section of printed circuit board that you're happy with, you can bang it up a little bit and we'll stick it onto the base. We'll bust out some epoxy sculpt to bulk up the base and adhere it to the base with some super glue. Well, way too much super glue. And in this case, that wasn't enough. We'll put some more on top to stick the electronics to them and then hopelessly try to sculpt without getting epoxy sculpt and glue all over your hands. Even before the epoxy sculpt cures, I'll start gluing some dirt on. This mix I have is dried up dirt from my backyard that I pulsed up in a crappy tiny blender. I like to glue the dirt down with super glue because it's super fast, but if I were making 10 of these, I'd use PVA glue for the ease of use. Unless I was planning on breaking the law later that day and having epoxy sculpt and super glue and dirt obscuring my fingerprints would be advantageous. While I'm gluing out my dirt mixture, I want to talk about today's sponsor, and that's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with tons of different classes covering a wide variety of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Skillshare is a great place to engage in your curiosity, creativity, or even further your career. For me personally, I'm always looking for ways to improve my videos, so I was interested in this hand lettering in motion class by Jake Bartlett. But maybe for the mini family, you guys are more interested in things like sculpting, so you can make your own miniatures in ZBrush or with more traditional methods. Premium membership gives you access to all of the Skillshare communities, so you can get your sculpt on or you can get your basket weave on. I'm not judging. Skillshare is also very affordable. An annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this episode, the mini family can get two whole months worth of free classes on Skillshare by following the link in the video description. Thanks for sponsoring this episode, Skillshare. Now back to the bases. I like to seal in my dirt with some super glue thin and then a spritz of accelerants. Again, if I were batching these out, I'd use watered down PVA glue instead. Once all the glue is dry, I hit it with some black primer and then some white ink all through my airbrush. I just pick one side to be brighter than the other, kind of arbitrarily. Then I laid down some orange ink and then some red ink for some additional shading. I painted the dirt a muddy red brown and then I started to bang up the orange platform with some black at the corners and the edges. Inside of that black paint, I put down some silver to imitate two layers of paint on this thing. The orange upper layer and then the underlying primer that I chipped away over time. Next, I painted the little components yellow and blue and roughed in some highlights. They don't need to be super smooth highlights, it's a base after all. After that, I mixed some dry pigments with matte medium and applied them to the base in a sloppy way. I was hoping the matte medium didn't totally kill the dusty look that dry pigments have, but it did, so I applied more of the same dry pigments to the base raw. Oh yeah, you like it applied raw, don't you, you dirty little baser. A lot of you are probably going to wonder how I securely adhere dry pigments to a base, and the honest answer is that I don't. I haven't found a solution that doesn't totally kill the dusty look of dry pigments, but I'd be happy to be wrong about that. So if you have a solution, let me know in the comments section below and we can all learn from that. Does this mean that my pigments might fall off over time? Possibly, but I'm okay with it for now. But in a year after all my hard work has faded away, maybe my opinion will be different. 
Next, we'll take some Tamiya Clear Orange and pull it onto the base around the electronics to simulate some kind of leaking fluid. Finally, we'll stick some arid looking grass tufts on this thing, clean up the base rim, and we're done. In the course of this video, I'm going to use a lot of different terrain vegetation from different manufacturers. Some of them are old and some are new. I'll put the manufacturers in the description and you can pick and choose what you like from them. All right, now onto the forest base. I started this base with some thick, chunky bark. I broke off a section that I liked and very similar to the last one, I stuck it to the base with some epoxy sculpt and less super glue this time. You could just glue it, but the epoxy sculpt allows me to angle the bark in any way that I want. I also sculpted on a little section for some swampy water later on. I glued some dirt on and sealed it in the same way as the last base. You may be wondering why I'm using this tiny spoon-like thing to get the dirt out. Well, I find this is a good way to filter out the majority of the large grains that I don't want all the time in favor of the small particles of dirt. You can put a stocking cap over the tin and then shake it out like a salt shaker, but I find for a small base like this, you kind of get dirt everywhere. A better idea would be to have a tin of only small particles and then dip the model into it with fresh glue. I also put super glue thin all over the bark to stabilize it, which then it proceeded to start smoking? The last thing I added was a tiny owl. I got this guy from a sprue for dryads for the game Age of Sigmar. We all have extra bits that are laying around that can spice up our bases. The main assembly of our forest base is done and now it's time for some prime and paint. For this one, I decided to slap some browns, yellows, and dark blues on in a haphazard fashion, wet blending all the colors. Next up, I washed the whole thing in black, which mutes the colors a bit. I followed this up with a two-stage dry brush, one of my original brown tone, and then another of the yellow color. I'm going for a sunrise effect with this one, mostly focusing my yellow dry brushing to one side of the base. Next up, some more dry pigments, this time a very desaturated green. In this example, I'm using some dry pastels ground up from an art supply store as opposed to a prefabricated solution. Now, let's veg this base up. I went crazy with vegetation on this base because nature is incredibly varied. Walk around in your backyard and count how many different kinds of plants you find to get an idea for this variety. Again, the manufacturers for this stuff I use will be linked below. Finally, I painted up the owl, filled my swamp area with some Vallejo still water effects mixed with Citadel Plague Bearer Flesh, a contrast paint, and then cleaned up the base room and the forest base is complete. I have a wood elf or two that would look really nice on this base. That's probably a good question to answer that you likely have. Scott! How do I put a mini on this thing if it's already done? Well, you can just super glue it on if you're lazy like me, or you can pin it. The majority of the materials that are in these bases, wood and PCB can all be drilled into. So if you're concerned about security, just pin the model to the base. Next base, back to sci-fi. Let's make a quick broken fence. I took some brass and bent it over a roughly rectangular shape and snipped it to size. Next, I glued the brass to some aluminum wire mesh, which I then cut out. No, this stuff cuts really nicely with scissors, and you should probably use that if you don't want tearing like you see here. Then I bang these things up a little bit, bending them around and adhere them to the base with, you know the drill by now, some epoxy sculpt and some super glue. Then apply some dirt and rocks of various size, glue on some leftover bits, and prime it up and we're good to go for paint. First, I started with a mustard yellow and an orange color for the shadows. Once this was dry, I applied a sepia wash, which I then followed up with a series of off-white dry brushing to bring out all the texture of the dirt. Next, I painted the fence with a darker silver and then sponged on some black and then some brighter silver to roughen it up a bit. Then, since this is a desert environment, I smacked a whack ton of dry pigments onto the base and the fence. I followed this up with some desert-like tufts, a little splash of blood for some color differentiation, and Bob's your uncle. Nice base for a mech crashing through a fence. Alright, last base. Let's do something a little bit more steampunky. Let's grab a base and start gluing on some bricks. These are resin, but if they're hard to find, just get some styrene rectangular stock and cut it into bricks. Easy peasy. Once they're all glued in, I dug through my bits box and found a little lantern which I proceeded to drill a hole into and stick a brass rod in. 
I then pinned this hole into my base and bang, we got a little light pole. I then filled in the gaps with some dirt and hit it up with some primer. I focused my undercoat around the light pole because my next step was to airbrush on some dark and light tones to mimic where the light was coming from, and that's the pole. After that, I started by painting the lantern a bright yellow, and then I painted the pole itself a metallic color. I then roughed that up like we did with the fence in the previous example using a sponge and some black and silver paint. Next up, I edge highlighted some of the bricks and added some recessed shading, sponged on some grime, etc. to bring out more detail and liven it up a bit. Lastly, I painted the dirt a brown color, added in some flowers, cleaned up the base rim, and our steampunk base is done. Those are our four examples all completed. I had a lot of fun doing this and I could do this all day doing different kinds of environments. If you want to see me do this again or maybe change up the format a bit, let me know in the comments section below. Some gamers out there might be concerned about the amount of time it takes to make one of these individual bases. Time spent in bases is time lost, not gaming. That's a reasonable concern for me. And if you fall into that camp, maybe instead of making a base like this for everyone in your army, just do it for a special character. Or you could simplify the bases a little bit and then mold them and cast them in resin. So you could make maybe five or 10 bases and then cast as many as you need. Maybe this is a video idea for the future. Well, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed it and you wanna support the channel, there is a link in the description that kind of summarizes all the ways that you can do that, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, like a Discord server where you and I can hang out and chat about your mini painting projects any day of the week. There's a link for merch like this t-shirt down there or an Amazon shopping link that you can use while shopping on Amazon. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to... <laughs>